with homelessness and the drug addiction crisis rising in the U.S., both at an all-time high, often getting intertwined together. And according to the Department of Housing and Urban Development, homelessness is up over 650,000 as of January 2023. To a Bangor's plan to clear the city's largest homeless encampment off corporate drive today. Police clarifying the planning to issue trespass warnings and simply direct homeless to services. So we learned a lot of lessons. We've spent three and a half months out here working with individuals trying to connect them to services. We've gotten a great buy-in from a whole bunch of folks. And those relationships that were created by the outreach workers or the navigators or the individuals here are crucial to building trust, to enabling somebody to believe that somebody is really here to help them. Individuals have been faced with barriers, have been disappointed, we get it, um, but returning that hope to individuals by consistent outreach and connection um, has been impaired to our ability to connect with a greater number of individuals out there. It is safe to say, we do have a drug problem. Oh gosh, yes. So you're the mayor? Yeah. Uh, what's your name? Rick. Rick, how are you doing? Good morning. What's the solution? No, it wasn't. It One wasn't person at a time. I guess this is... This is the encampment. It's just... Finding the right fit. Uh, you want to go with services okay. that can be used we'll to help. Go. One individual at a time. The housing crisis, like most crises, is not insurmountable. What we need are some officials, city and town planners, tenants, and private developers with a little imagination, a little knowledge and a lot of persistency and willingness to work together. Uh, but my focus is the mental health, the use of buildings that are not being utilized properly, like the building of the abyss, YMCA building. There, we have buildings across the city that are not being used. We can use the ARPA money to push for adding beds for the, for the other house, uh, adding in areas where we can get them counseling, stuff like that. Rather than just wanting to talk about, like last week, $6 million earmark for renovating this building. I didn't hear from that should be the last thing you should all, all y'all should talk about. This building is not needing rescue. The people out in the streets, the people with mental health issues, the people who are addicted to drugs, they need to be rescued, not this building. Now that's Bangor's problem, some would say. Orange things are needle caps, more needle caps. And for the residents of Bradford, I see this is exactly what they don't want in their small town. Bradford is a rural area, 20 miles northwest of Bangor. Tonight, the town of Bradford will be voting on a 180 day ordinance to give the council time to make sure the codes are being followed. My name is Michael Collar. I'm boxing mm -hmm. and uh, he has a 35 acres. Mike Teller here, who bought the land in Bradford in July 2023, and there, shortly after, put the septic system in. His intentions? To build a community. Uh, my name is Michael Collar. I'm boxing mm -hmm. and uh, he has a 35 acres. I don't know if you need a vote for me to talk or not. Oh, I'm sorry. Are you a resident of? Nope. No. No. no, no, no. no we so do, do I? Do I? I'm, excuse me, please. Just one person at a time, sir. <coughs> your, name, your name again? Michael Collar. Michael Collar. Is there a motion to allow Michael Collar to speak? I have a motion. I have a motion. And do I have a second? 
Okay, uh, so this motion does require two thirds, uh, does not need any discussion. Uh, so I'm going to ask for a show of hands. Uh, all those in favor, please raise your hand. I don't think I'll need a count. Um, that's all those opposed, please raise your hand. We do not have a two thirds majority to allow you to speak. We all want a villain. This man, Mike Tuller, who purchased the land in Bradford in the summer of 2023, but when the word got around on social media that the 35-acre lot will be transformed into a homeless encampment, the residents went to the ballot box. According to the Constitution and the laws of the state. So with that, I'm going to turn to the first article of business, Article 2. Uh, the article reads as follows, shall an ordinance entitled Town of Bradford Moratorium Ordinance Development of Rooming Houses, Shelters, Campgrounds, and Tiny Home Parks be enacted. Anybody else on the floor would like to speak? I think you were first. Is there anybody on the select board of the town attorney who'd like to speak to that issue? Is there an ordinance against being homeless in Bradford on this ordinance? No. No. So it's not going to fix it up for the name of that? Thank you. I think I'm just asking for clarification. It's going to provide 180-80 days for the town to oversee what a landowner is doing on their own property. Mm -hmm. Is that correct, Levi? To those extent of what's going on. Thank you. Uh, I'll, I'll start with you in the back, please. I am a school bus driver out here. This ordinance needs to stay in for the kids' sake. It has nothing to do with the adults. We don't want them here, no. But what about the kids that live right down the road? Think about that. Don't think about the people coming in or out, but what about the kids? Property that I bought in Bradford. Yep. From what I understand, there's two drug houses, right? Right there next to the property. Yeah. And so they're saying, oh, why bring anybody here? Because we're drugs are everywhere. Mike is also involved in working with the homeless population in Bangor and members of the city council and government. What we're interested in is stopping the criminal behavior yeah. and protecting the others that are working here and actively trying to find housing and services. They need to be successful in our communities. Bangor's homeless is not contained at Tent City, and with those evictions, they'll be in parks and at the library that's right across the street from City Hall. Must be pretty overwhelming for you. It is, yeah, very much. It takes, it takes a whole team of people to be able to... Who are you working with? Um, most of the organizations around town, whether it's community health and counseling, uh, Penobscot County, um, I say Penobscot County, um, PCHC. Uh, you can rescue other buildings to house those, or at least develop a program to be able to get them what they need. Uh, results from the tally and the results on the motion to pass Article 2. Uh, are 95 in favor and 5 opposed. So the motion carries. The next item of business. What happens if because of AI and automation you get laid off of your job, do yourself cannot sustain your standard of living, cannot keep your roof over your head for more than three months? You are an at-risk person of homeless. Who you camp with? Uh, it's real sand. How you doing? You, would you like water? Sure. Did you get the X on the on your I encampment? Don't, I don't have a tanker. Did you grab a cracker? Yeah, I'm lost. Boy. One person at a time. I can make it short sleep. Yeah? Yeah. How'd you how'd you manage to get homeless? 
um, like, he showed his father used to travel and work, and one day he called me and said he was from Hong, sent money home to, um, me and the kids, and then one minute he was coming home, and then the next week I got a phone call. You got it, bud. That, uh, he wasn't coming home because he passed away, so, um, but initially, emotionally, I got a little distraught from everything and didn't want my kids to my depression. So I came out here and tried to get work, and then I saw the lifestyle of insights of Bangor and didn't realize what it was like. So I used to just come here and shop and go home. Well, now that I'm living in here, it's, it was really hard living. I didn't want to bring my kids out here. How long you been here? A long time. How did you get homeless? Well, um, unfortunately we had an apartment where she, when I first met my fiance, she had an apartment and I moved in with her. Um, and then unfortunately she was evicted, didn't have, she was embarrassed so she didn't want to say anything to me where I could have come up with the funding to help pay the rent that was still left over. Um, but the company that she rented through said that they didn't want to wait for the money for, from her um, card coming in the mail so that's why they evicted her. Um, and then after that, I, I stuck it out with her, you know, and I didn't want to like leave her high and dry. So therefore, I, I was there with her for every step. And we then from we went from the apartment to couch surfing with friends, and I felt like we were kind of overstaying our welcome. So I, I took the initiative to leave. Um, like I, um, and unfortunately, while we were together, um, I suffered. A, Parasitic bacterial infection, infection to my left arm due to a, constr a work uh, work accident, and almost cost me my arm and my life, and also put me out of work for quite a period of time. My name is Doug Dunbar, and I am the founder of something called Penobscot County Cares. It's a collaboration of about 30 or 40 nonprofit organizations in Penobscot County who are focused on three crises that have really never been worse in this part of Maine or other places housing and homelessness, substance use disorder and overdose deaths, and a rise in mental illness. And we know that oftentimes those crises intersect, they overlap, uh, and, you know, we see the, the results, you know. Are there funds, are there funds left over from COVID that might be allocated to this crisis? We have allocated some to this crisis uh, already, um, I'm, I'm sure. From COVID? From the COVID yeah, bank? From the, from the um, <clears throat> American Rescue Plan funds. Yeah. Yes, there has been. That's, that's good, right? Yeah. Um, I, How much? I How much has been allocated? the entire amount. Several million dollars. Yeah. I, but I Several don't million? Yes. Correct. And still, there seems to be quite a bit of a homeless crisis. The number of unhoused people in Bangor and Penobscot County never have been higher. Uh, the Bangor School Department is just one example. Last spring indicated that there were 80 students, at least 80 children who were unhoused just in Bangor. So we know the problem is much, much bigger than what's happening here at the encampment. It's homeless, it's housing. It's a combination of More importantly, we should never have gotten into this situation. This encampment has been around in one iteration or another for three or four years. And beginning over two years ago, the city of Bangor received $20 million in ARPA funds, American Rescue Plan Act funds. Penobscot County received $30 million. Just between Bangor and Penobscot County, that's $50 million that came starting two and a half years ago. We have a serious homeless crisis. Looks like someone's Got a little fire over here. Hanging clothes. The Bangor's plan to clear the city's largest homeless encampment off corporate drive today. Police clarifying they're planning to issue trespass warnings and simply direct homeless to services. 